we start off this exciting week with current AAFS president Ken Williams. Ken has overseen a transformative year of the Academy, and we are honored to have him in studio now to discuss the highlights of his presidency. So first all, thank you for joining us. Thank you for having me. Congratulations on a successful year. As you look back over your term, what are the highlights and what stands out as a noteworthy accomplishment? There were many highlights that we've had as an organization, as a board, and certainly me as the president over the past year. We are a very diverse organization, and that diversity makes us stronger as an organization. It can bring about its own challenges, but it also makes us stronger because that diversity of perspectives, diversity of opinion, diversity of thought, not just diversity of people, because unfortunately, that's what people often think about when they think of diversity, just race your ethnicity, but diversity is so much more than that. And by bringing on those different thoughts and opinions, we're able to get experiences from people that may not have an opportunity to, say, contribute to the organization. And that was something that I really wanted to make an emphasis this past year. And one of the ways I was able to do that was through our Academy News Feed. I implemented Justice Talks. With my theme of justice for all, I thought Justice Talks were the perfect way to do that. But in addition to that, I was also able to reach out to universities to let us know about the projects that their students were working on, just to let us know how they are going about promoting justice for all. And one of those things that someone was able to contribute from a university was the fact that they looked at just how much the media plays a role in high profile cases. And so with that, they compare what happens to someone that didn't have the means or someone that came from a disadvantaged background versus someone that was from an affluent background. Did that person from the disadvantaged background get the same media attention? Unfortunately, the answer to that was no. And this is what the Justice Talks allowed us to do. Sometimes we started the conversation, sometimes we may have ended the conversation, but that was something that was important to me. Here at the conference, we also have Justice Talks case breaks. And with that, we have eight of those scheduled for the conference. Not only is that free con scientific content for the attendees of the meeting, but it's another way to continue that conversation. And one of those Justice Talks is the boundaries of judicial discretion. It is something we're all aware of, but no one really talks about it. Judges have a lot of discretion in their sentencing guidelines and just how severe the punishment can be. But unfortunately, when we look at the consequences of racial, socioeconomic, and all of those other things that lead to disparities, that ultimately leads to unequal justice outcomes. And this is what I wanted to focus on during this year. That is why I chose Justice for All. It's just a small part of our vision statement to promote justice for all and integrity through forensic science. I wanted this to serve as a reminder to the entire forensic science community. This is something we must do on a daily basis. We're not a social activist group, but we are a forensic science organization, and we need to promote justice for all through the work that we do on a daily basis. You clearly have a lot to be proud of. You've gained a lot of ground this year. Where do you think that there's still work to be done? Although we've gained a lot of ground, I still think there's more work to be done on our level of inclusion. It's sometimes difficult to get newer voices heard, to get newer members involved. And when I think of that, I often think about something I heard through the church organizations that I work with. 20% of the people do 80% of the work. I also find that true in the organizations. In fact, it's, it could be true for the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. Sometimes that's necessary because the work that we do is very important. And when you put someone in a position to do the work that you need to get done, you want to ensure that it does that, that it gets done. And if you don't know the person, sometimes it's hard to entrust them with that responsibility for fear of the work not getting done. However, if we don't continue to bring in new voices, we will become stagnant. We will not grow as an organization and we will not benefit the forensic science community or the membership. 
So there has to be a way to bring in those new voices to be more inclusive. And that is something that I wanted to do. I know we have a committee interest page on our website where members can express their interest in getting involved. Well, there are some committees you may not want to give that responsibility to a person that hasn't proven themselves. But there are committees that we can put people on to allow them to prove themselves, to work their way up, and possibly one day even sit in this chair to serve as president. Someone gave me an opportunity many years ago, and had it not been for that, I may not have had the chance to serve as the president. And that was truly a privilege for me to serve as the president of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. It is something I'm very proud of. It is something that I cherish. It is something that I definitely don't take for granted. It was a blessing to serve in this capacity. You've recently written that there's an ongoing debate over whether justice is blind. As we promote justice for all this week, what are your opinions on that topic? Unfortunately, justice isn't blind. As I talked about earlier, those gender, those racial, those socioeconomic disparities that have led to those unequal justice outcomes, this is what we must deal with. And I don't know if justice should be blind, but I know it definitely isn't. But there has to be a way to bring more equity in the justice that has been delivered for so many years. And it's just something that we must deal with. And when we think about equity or those justice outcomes, it's not an equal outcome that we're seeking, but we just need some equitable form of justice and it's been elusive. That justice that we are seeking has been elusive for many people. The marginalized just haven't gotten the attention that they need and definitely not the outcomes. And that's something we need to face. We need to deal with it. And maybe as an organization, we can do what we can to improve that situation. As I mentioned, the work that we do on a daily basis. For me, as a lab analyst, when that case comes in, Maybe instead of looking at the race of the individual and then having that bias creep in, maybe just report on the results. Don't be so biased that you want to see the, an outcome that a prosecutor may want. Your job as a forensic practitioner is to report on the results, perform the analyses and report on the results. You're not concerned with what happens in the court system. That's my job, just to report on the results. And maybe if we begin to do that more effectively, maybe we can achieve the justice outcomes that we're looking for and that people truly deserve. You've recently said it takes a village to promote justice for all. How so? And do you think that we're doing a good enough job working in collaboration with one another to achieve that? That it takes a village is an old African proverb. And what it goes to is that it takes a village to raise a child. And I wanted to take that into my term as a president just to say it takes a village to promote justice for all. And that's paying homage to my roots as an African American, just taking a look at that and thinking that it takes a village but it certainly does take a village because of the collaboration that is needed. We can't do it alone. Take a look at the American Academy of Forensic Sciences. We are a multidisciplinary organization. We have 12 sections, ranging from anthropology to question documents and toxicology. And so all the sections in between. We touch many different facets of the discipline of forensic science. So by working together, we're able to create a community where we can draw on the skills of others to achieve the outcomes that we so desperately need to achieve. So we are, as an organization, doing, in my opinion, a pretty good job of working together. We were able to collaborate as an organization and as a board, as I mentioned before, with the Justice Talks. When I reached out to all the sections to see if they wanted to contribute to the Justice Talks, many of them did, some of them, they may have been busy, I don't know why, but that was a collaboration that I wanted to do. Even with the Justice Talks, 
reaching out to the universities, allowing them to contribute. That was a collaboration. Putting this meeting together, where we have over 3,000 attendees from all across the globe coming to scenic Denver, Colorado with the mountaintops as a backdrop. <laughs> that is a collaboration. Just coming together with this meeting and presenting the research, the information that they've worked so hard to put out there and just to share that information. And by those opportunities to collaborate and network, we can continue to do a great job. But there's more work to be done. We're not going to sit on our, on our hands and just become stagnant. We need to continue to grow, improve our collaboration, increase those opportunities for collaboration. And by doing that, we will become a stronger and much more connected organization. Now, I'd be remiss if I didn't point out the barrier that you've broken. You are the first African-American elected as president of the Academy. What does that mean for you? And do you feel the weight and responsibility of the role model that you are? That question is one that I really haven't addressed as the president. It's something that I am truly aware of. When you look at our history, our 75 year history, and you look at the room of past presidents and you look at the wall that's in the Academy office of all the past presidents, there's never in our 75 year history been a person of color. And so to be the first person of color to serve in this capacity is something that I am aware of. It is something that I'm proud to, to be able to do. And it's a privilege that I don't take for granted. It is a blessing. But as you mentioned, it does come with that weight. When I often talk about working and just how hard I may try to work, Sometimes it's been asked, well, Ken, why do you work so hard? Well, because I feel I have to. Well, why do you feel you have to work so much harder than the next person? Because of that weight that I often feel that I'm carrying. Because in my mind, I felt if I don't do this the right way, no one will be able to come behind me to do it again. And I know that may be a lot of pressure, But that is the weight that I carry. And I hope I did the organization proud in the work that I did. There were many things that I was passionate about, and I wanted to see them through. But I thank you for asking the question, just to give me an opportunity to talk about it. Because as I've said, it is not something that I've discussed but I am aware, I've not said it, to be the first African-American president, but I am aware of it, and I hope I'm not the last. What measures are currently in place within the forensic science community to, community to ensure equity and to ensure that there isn't bias? Well, there's been a greater emphasis on just educating forensic practitioners on the presence of bias. We all have it, it's all there. But what we need to do is just mitigate it and just reduce the, the effects of bias. Because the way I see it, and this is just my personal opinion, bias, it really just denies justice, okay? And when that bias raises to the level of discrimination, that defeats justice. And we certainly don't want that to happen. So if we can educate people on the presence of bias and how it creeps into the work that you do on a, on a regular basis and just make you aware of it, maybe we can do a better job of promoting justice for all. When you take a look at news articles or news releases and you hear about forensic scientists that are falsifying data, that are dry labbing, they're doing this because they want to achieve an outcome that is not necessarily the right one because it's not the truth. In order to promote justice for all, we need to seek truth. It's not the truth as you see it, but when you're analyzing that evidence, you report on the results of that evidence. As I mentioned, we shouldn't be concerned with the outcome of what happens in court. 
If the evidence that comes across our desk, if it's negative, it's negative. Report it as negative. Don't falsify data. That prevents justice. And as I said, when that discrimination becomes an issue, then it defeats justice. And I, as the president of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences, wanted to, justice for all to serve as a reminder to the entire community that this is something that we must do. And so we need more equity. As I mentioned, those equal justice outcomes, that may not be something we can do, but we need a more equitable justice outcome. How is the field addressing issues of systemic bias or inequities when it comes to collecting, analyzing, and presenting evidence? Well, one of the things that we've done outside of the lectures that I've talked about, and one of the things that I haven't mentioned is the fact that we had a bias lecture in the fall, and that was something where we had over 800 registrants to sign up for that bias webinar. And that is something that we offer free to members because we do feel that is important. And we were able to offer that on our Academy Connect, which is our platform where we can have webinars. And so that was a free benefit for members. Those that were not members of the Academy had to pay a small fee, but it was just a small fee because we felt it was that important for everyone in the forensic science community to get that education on the presence and how bias impacts the work that we do. But another thing that helps with that is standardization. And with the American Academy, we have the American Standards Board where they are a standards developing organization and they create consensus based standards. The presence of standards promotes justice by bringing that uniformity. And that goes to addressing the bias that you talked about. Because if you have a standard that you must follow, it removes that bias. Because if you're not following the standard, then you have a different question that you must answer. And so by just educating the community, by enforcing standards, those are two ways that we can help level the playing field, so to speak, to have that equitable justice that we're looking for. I wanna get back to representation. Why is representation so important? Why does it matter? Why is it important for people who are coming up behind you to see that? Representation is important to me because it provides an opportunity to serve as a role model, sometimes without even knowing it. Early on in my tenure as a president, someone emailed me. And as someone that I've known in the academy for a while, they're young forensic scientists, they're working their way up, they're getting involved, they're proving themselves, showing that they can do the work. After exchanging a few emails, this individual said to me, I want to get to where you are. And I was pleased to be able to tell that individual that I hope you do. Because this gives them hope that maybe they too can reach this position. It wasn't easy. It took a lot of work just to get to this point. You have to put in a lot of years, a lot of hours. It just doesn't happen overnight. But by proving yourself and working your way up, now I am able to show others that come behind me that they too can do it. But representation is important for so many different reasons. It just allows you the opportunity to make a difference. And this is something that I wanted to do this past year and just make a difference in just the little things that we did as an organization. It wasn't all on me. I wasn't the one to do everything, but as the president, I could set the groundwork and just point us in that direction, even just by allowing people to have a voice because that allows them to be represented. And that's why representation was important to me. But it also gave me an opportunity to address some of those issues that I feel are important. Like we've talked about bias and discrimination. There are so many things that people have to deal with on a daily basis. We all deal with bias. We all have encountered, have encountered bias and we have to deal with it our very own way. I often get the comment that when someone meets me for the first time and they see me, having talked to me on the telephone or maybe just exchanged a few email uh, correspondence back and forth, 
Oh, you're not what I pictured. Okay. Just those little microaggressions that we all deal with on a regular basis. Or just dealing with things in regular life. I know we've heard sometimes about the talk that African American families may have to have with their children when driving. And it's something that I've talked to my boys about. But that gets into what I mentioned earlier as far as diversity of experience. We may not always deal with that. Or the board that you're working with, the organization that you're working with may not always deal with that. And just a little funny story, when we went through COVID and we all had to go virtual for the first time, we would have Zoom meetings and we'd had a background that was sent from the academy. But it was a background, unfortunately, that was geared more so for lighter skins. And it just didn't work for me. I blended into the background. But it was something that they may not have encountered, but I was able to bring it to their attention just with that representation. So now it's something that we think about. We have to think about those different skin colors, those different hues, because it all makes a difference. But that's how representation plays a part. And to think there are kids who now see themselves in you, that's pretty powerful. That is something that I often think about when I speak to the young forensic scientists. When I go to a school to speak, I just did it this past year with National Forensic Science Week when I went out to elementary schools, middle schools, and I spoke to college groups. I was able to speak to them as the president of the American Academy of Forensic Sciences, a national organization that has over 6,000 members, international and national. And so that is something that they could, as you said, look up to, because maybe before they not only didn't think they could join that organization, but now they see they could possibly become president because someone that looks like them is serving as the president. Ken Williams, thank you so much for joining us today and congratulations again on another successful and trailblazing year. Thank you, Molly.